In this video, we're going to look at using multimodal models with Olama. And the first thing we're going to need to do is to download one of those multimodal models. So if you go over here to olama.com and click on the link for the models catalog, you'll see that there's a category here for vision models. If you click on that, you'll see a list of the vision models that are currently available. And some of them are general purpose models like uh, Gemma, or I think, yeah, there's a Mistral model down here. Uh, but the one that we're going to use today is called Lava. So basically it's Llama, but for, for vision. So at any rate, I'll click on the link for Lava, and I can see I have a 7 billion, 13 billion, and 34 billion parameter uh, options. But I'm just going to use the 7 billion today because it is, because it's going to be smaller and easier to work with. So if I go back over here to Visual Studio Code, where I already have Olama up and running, I can simply say Olama pull lava. And this will take just a few seconds, but I'll probably speed it up to the magic of video. All right, with that done, I can now say Olama list. And I see that lava is in there. And I can say Olama run lava and it'll give me a prompt now I have some pictures over here and I've given them numbers instead of names so that it doesn't look like that lava is getting a hint about what's in the picture from the name we'll start with this one here 0 3 you can see that we have a deer drinking out of a um, river and so what I'll do is I'll just start off with something simple we'll say describe this image now what I have to do is I have to tell uh, the model the location of the file. And since I'm in the same directory here, I can just say dot for the current directory and then 03.jpg. Now it's going to say that it added the image to the input. And then you'll see what we get back. It shows a fawn, young deer family, drinking water from a small stream, brown spots, white ears, and so on. Well, let's look at a different image here. So here we have an image of some of some eggs. So what I'm going to do is just to be safe, I'm going to clear out the context. And then I'll start off and I'll say, uh, describe this image. And I'll pass it the path of the image. It's going to say this display displays a group of brightly colored eggs, the background is a solid teal color, and so on. Well, what I can do is I can now begin to ask more questions about this image. And I can say, uh, how many eggs are in the image? And it says there are three eggs. Now, why does it say three? Well, it's talking about these three right here. Probably this one it's not, it's not referring to. Um, even though it looks like there may even be some more. But there are definitely three. And if I say, uh, what color are the eggs? It'll tell me pink, yellow, and blue. So apparently it's referring to these three here, not this one. Interesting. Uh, if you got a, if you had a more advanced model, then it might that might be more accurate. But again, this is using the smallest model for simplicity here. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more, click the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. To be notified of future videos, click the bell to know as soon as new videos are published. Let's take a look at this picture now. It's a picture of two ladies, and I could ask something like, how many people, whoops, I need to clear my context first. How many people are in this image? It says, oh, guess what? You have to give it an image. It says there are two people in this image, and there obviously are. Let's take a look at this one. Now, this is a popsicle uh, that is made out of a cactus. So I could say something like, what is unusual about this image? Ah, and I forgot to clear my context. Okay, what is unusual about this image? It 
It says a cactus with spikes has been artificially modified to resemble an ice cream popsicle. Unusual in nature because the cactus would not have the characteristics of an edible treat. Uh, one last thing here. Let's see about. Let's see how it can do with text. So let's say let's clear and say, what is the text in this picture? And we'll feed it seven. It says I made a mistake. Mistakes help me learn. So it can also transcribe. It can also transcribe text. Now there's one other thing. Using the command line like this can be a bit of a burden. So there is an extension actually for uh, Visual Studio Code called the AI Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. And I've already got it installed here. And once it's installed, you'll see this icon over here. Click on that. And you'll be able to see several different uh, several different panels here, some of which we can talk about in another video. But one thing that you can do is you can add Olama models to it, and you can see some Olama models I've already added. But if I click on the plus and then tell it to add an Olama model, and then tell it to select a model from the local library, you'll see the uh, Olama models that I have not added. And here's Lava, so I'll check it, click OK, and then I can try it out in the playground. So if I click on the playground, it's going to give me this chat-like interface. And I can go over here and select the model that I want. In this case, it's lava. And then I could say something like, uh, I can say describe this image. And then instead of having to include the path, then I can select an image here and then run it. And you'll see there's a picture of a camera. But at any rate, in the center of the frame, there is a camera with its lens visible. So this is just another way to interact with a Olama model. And there are many other things that we could talk about in other videos of how to use the playground.